We finished our tour of the lower extremity at the pelvis, so let's begin our tour of the axial skeleton there. Medial to the pelvis, we have the sacrum, which is frequently five fused vertebra. Inferior to the sacrum, we have the coccyx, which is typically four fused vertebra. Let's go back to the sacrum and go superior to the sacrum, and we will see that we have the lumbar vertebra. We can see the vertebra located here. Let's rotate so that we get a good picture of the vertebra located here. We can take a look at the anterior view here. Let's rotate back around. Superior to the lumbar vertebra, we have the thoracic vertebra. The thoracic vertebra stand out in that they have the ribs attached to them. Now if we spin back around here, we will see in terms of our ribs, ribs one through seven are known as true ribs because they are going to articulate with the sternum. Ribs eight through 10 are known as false ribs. They articulate with costal cartilage and do not directly articulate with the sternum. And then finally, we rotate back to the posterior aspect here. We will see that ribs 11 and 12 are known as floating ribs because they do not attach to the sternum at all. Superior to the thoracic vertebra, we have the cervical vertebra. There are seven cervical vertebra with the most superior vertebra attaching to the skull. Now, predominantly, we are going to be interested in the cervical, thoracic, and the lumbar vertebra. And one easy way to remember the number of vertebra each are breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast is typically held at 7 a.m., for some people at least, and there are seven cervical vertebra. Lunch is around 12, again, at least for some people, and there are 12 thoracic vertebra. And dinner is around five, and there are five lumbar vertebra. Now what I would like to do is switch to some static slides and look at the vertebra in a little bit more detail. Okay, let's look at the sacrum in a little bit more detail, and you can see that there are essentially five fused vertebra to create one solid bone. Below the sacrum, we have the coccyx, which again is typically four fused vertebra as well. Now let's take a look at a typical lumbar vertebra. You should know the various different parts of a vertebra, including the vertebral body, the transverse process, the spinous process, the pedicle, the lamina, the vertebral foramen, the superior and inferior articular facets, and the area in between the superior and inferior articular facets is known as the pars interarticularis. Note that with a thoracic vertebra, we have facets to accommodate the ribs, known as the costal facets. And if you look at a typical lower cervical vertebra, you'll notice that there is a foramen in the transverse process to accommodate the cervical arteries. Now the two upper cervical vertebra are rather unique. C2, which is known as the axis, you'll notice has this dens or this andantoid process that's sticking up superiorly. The atlas, also known as C1, has no vertebral body. And if we look at this view here, we can see how the dens from C2 projects superiorly into C1, or the atlas, and is held in place by the annular ligament. And then finally, C1, or the atlas, articulates with the occiput, or C0.